And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome here to the main event for the NSRA Duel at Fuel. 24 drivers made their way here into the main event, either through the eight heat races or through the two LCQs. And now they're going to take this track one more time, this time for 50 laps to see who's going to be the inaugural winner of this special event race. Take a look at our starting lineup. The first eight drivers, first through eighth, are the drivers that won their respective heats. Ninth through sixteenth are the drivers that finished second in their respective heats. And then the remaining drivers, the eight drivers at the back, are drivers that made it in through the two LCQ races. So you've got Wes McCoy on the pole position alongside of Jeff Clark, Benny Watson, and Cody Smart. They are row two. Ryan Butcher and Jesse Turner are row three. Row four, Arthur Xavier and Justin Dearborn. Those were your heat winners. Your second place finishes in the heats. You've got uh, Colleen Usury alongside Michael Norman, Jay Jefferson and Quentin Moore, Nick Rail and Alvaro Torres, Dylan Poteet and Sebastian Farina. And then these drivers were drivers that made it in through the LCQs. Levi McIntyre was the winner of LCQ number two. Alex Lozano was the winner of LCQ number one. Johnny Gardner finished second in LCQ number two. Matt McIntyre second in LCQ number one. Andrew Miller was third in LCQ number th uh, two. Destin Bolin was third in LCQ number one. And then the last two drivers to make it in that just barely made it in Al Legacy was fourth in the final transfer spot in LCQ number two. Dylan Young was fourth in LCQ number one. So that is the way that they line up here for today's race. It's going to be 50 laps of racing, no cautions, and let's get ready to get them rolling. Let's go down trackside and get those most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines! Well, yesterday in our heat races, some of them were exciting, some of them were boring, but boy, that L LCQ race, especially the second one, was really exciting. So let's wait and see what we're in store for here in the main event. 50 laps of racing, as we stated. Is it going to be a runaway? Is someone just going to check out and nobody's going to be able to catch them? Or will we have a kind of an unpredictable finish? Because... You know, Levi McIntyre made it into this race after winning the second LCQ race, and a good portion of that LCQ race, he was running in fourth at the time in the final transfer position, and then before he knows it, he's up there leading and winning the LCQ, so we could be in for something like that again here today. Is it going to be important starting up at the front, starting at the back? We're going to have to wait and see. Maybe a truck in the middle of the pack will win. And with it being 50 laps of racing, that's a lot more opportunity for drivers to make mistakes in what we've seen so far this weekend of overstepping that cushion and sliding it up into the outside wall. 50 laps, 24 trucks. Who's going to be the winner at the duel at fuel? Let's roll. We're green. Oh, contact back there. They're going to save it. Jeff Clark nearly went down into Benny Watson after a little bit of help from Cody Smart. Looks like they all got through turns one and two fairly easily. I don't think anybody had an issue. And now we got a couple cars up into the wall. That was Justin Dearborn I saw. Colleen Usury in the 21 as well. And I'm sure there were others. Dylan Young, Levi McIntyre there. Sebastian Farina. And Dylan Poteet, all were up into the wall there in three and four. And there goes Matt McIntyre in the 10. And others, that's Michael Norm in the 98. Johnny Gardner, I think, got through in the 29. Dustin Boland, the double zero, may have gotten the wall a little bit, although he might have only just kind of gotten swept up in that. Not really sure he did hit the wall. I think he moved up the track after contact from Norman as we're three wide off turn four. That's Arthur Xavier, Jeff Clark, and Ryan Butcher mixing it up. And I believe that's for third place. Oh, wow. Xavier got really tight through the corner. Slid up into the 92 of Jesse Turner. That opens the door for Cody Smart down low. And Jay Jefferson there as well in the 54 in this mix. And Turner overdrives the cushion. He's into the wall. Same for the 0-3 of Nicholas Rail. Wes McCoy continues to lead the way. Watson in second. 
Has a couple of Thor Sport cars on pit road, Levi McIntyre and Michael Norman. Now remember, they're not out of it yet. We had Dylan Young, who was a lap down in the second LCQ race, get the fourth position. So, you know, these guys here, yeah, they're running up towards the front, but if they make a mistake, all these drivers that have heard early mistakes could easily jump back up into the top five, maybe up even to the race lead. With it being 50 laps, anything is possible. We had a battle brewing there for second. Ryan Butcher stuck a nose to the inside of Benny Watson, could not make it work, and now Jeff Clark wants third place. No contact back there for around the sixth position. Jay Jefferson was getting moved up the track by Cody Smart, and they're catching a slow car, and Jeff Clark's into the wall, as are Smart and Jefferson and Alex Lozano. And I think a byproduct of all that was a slower machine in front of them, and that's actually the car that just got spun there. That was Colleen Usury. I think he just almost got spun off the nose of Arthur Xavier. Andrew Miller in the 30 is on pit road. That changes up the battle for fourth. Alvaro Torres just made his way around Arthur Xavier. And we got all our top three into the wall. The top five are in the wall. Butcher, Xavier, McCoy, Watson, and Moore are piling in. Quentin Moore, as well as Usury. Torres was in that as well. And who did that give the lead to? Well, it gave it to Al Legacy, but he just got into the wall into turn one. Well, they wetted the track before these drivers went out for the main event. Remember, this track has been sitting since yesterday. Oh, Wes McCoy almost got into the back there of Legacy. So, this has got to obviously be a lot more slicker for these drivers than it was yesterday. And we have basically everybody, I think, in this field has visited that outside wall now. And we're only seven laps in. Wes McCoy, I think, just took the lead back from Al Legacy. He did, although you can see he's got damage on that machine. Donut on the left side, a donut on the right side, although for the most part, that truck looks fairly intact still. Legacy is now in second. Third place is going to be Jay Jefferson. Ryan Butcher, I believe, is in fourth. Although, where is he? No, actually, I think he might be on pit road. Fourth place might actually now be Justin Dearborn in the 46. And I think that might move Dylan Poteet up to fifth. Yeah, 77, I believe, is on pit lane. Was that him just there? Yes, it was. Yep, he's on pit road. Arthur Xavier's on pit road. Colleen Usury just took his car behind the wall. And a couple of other drivers have actually retired out of the race already. Alvaro Torres, Quentin Moore, they're both out of the race. Let's see who else is out. Uh, Alex Lozano, Cody Smart, Colleen Usury we saw retire out of the race. And Johnny Gardner is also out. Andrew Miller, Sebastian Farina, and Dylan Young, who started dead last in this race, I think. No, he, fin he started 23rd of the 24 cars. He's going to finish dead last. I don't think he really ever got out of the blocks. I think he might have been one of the first cars to spin into the outside wall and retired early. So this is a battle for the lead right here between Wes McCoy and Al Legacy, both of whom have damage, both of whom have gotten up into the wall. McCoy got into the wall up in three. Legacy got up into the wall in one. And right now we've only got five drivers on the lead lap. The last of those is Dylan Poteet in the 17, who I think is... Yeah, he's only about a little more than a straightaway ahead of Wes McCoy. He's just now exiting turn four. McCoy is going into turn three. So technically, we're, we're close to having only four trucks on the lead lap. However, McCoy is starting to close in on the 77 of Ryan Butcher, who right now is running in seventh. And another thing that we've seen, especially in the two LCQ races yesterday, is when the leader catches up to traffic, if he catches them in just the wrong spot, it messes up his line on entry, and they could, and we could not, this could ah, possibly not be the last time we've seen Wes McCoy slide up into the outside wall. Jeff Clark is running a lap down, two laps down in eighth. Nicholas Rail two laps down in ninth. Then you go back here, and what could maybe be a battle for third 
the 54 of Jesse Turner, the 46 of Justin Dearborn, and there you see Dearborn gets a big run. Something's wrong with, Je with Jay Jefferson. Because Dearborn caught him and passed him really quickly. Not so certain, but I, I'm pretty sure that Dearborn spun, but it doesn't look like he really has that much damage. That car might be the only car really up to speed right now. And be interesting to see if he might have a car strong enough to get up there and reel in the top two. Because he flew by Jay Jefferson. Oh, he cut the lead down that time by about 1.4 seconds. So he's got a fast truck. He's running 30.1s. And the race leader ran a 31.5, Legacy a 31.9. So there's a huge difference in lap times. Dearborn right now is reeling in the top two very quickly. Was McCoy now trying to get by Dylan Poteet. Running in fifth was the last truck on the lead lap. Little contact, still contact. McCoy trying to crowd Poteet up into the wall. And I don't think Poteet was going to settle for that. Wes McCoy could have very easily been hooked up into the wall off the nose of the 17, but now McCoy is going to clear for the position. Well, not for the position, but at least for the track position. Al Legacy under fire here from Jeff Clark, and Legacy's around. Oh, and there goes Dearborn. He's going to get through. Oh, boy, that makes me nervous when a car is facing 90 degrees the wrong way in the middle of the track. Legacy's going to lose second to Dearborn, third to Jeff J. Jefferson, who just got around. And now Dearborn has a little less than six seconds between himself and Wes McCoy for the lead. He's going to have a couple more trucks to have to deal with, Jeff Clark and Dylan Poteet, but this thing ain't over yet. And there's still a long ways to go. We haven't even reached the halfway point. 17 laps on the board. Still got 34 laps remaining, 33 when McCoy hits the line. Fuel should not be an issue. It was set to times one. And Dearborn's going to have an interesting battle to get by here. This is Clark and Poteet not battling for position. Oh, and they both get into the wall. And that's going to slow Dearborn down a bit as he's going to get to the inside of both of them. And he is going to pass the two of them, clear them into turn one. Maybe. Clark's going to cross over back to the inside, but can't quite get there. And Dearborn's going to start checking out. So now there's nothing but clean racetrack between the 96 and the 46. That last time by, Dearborn must have lost, I think, maybe a little bit because of having to check up for the contact between the 3 and the 17. No, he continued to close in. 1.2 seconds chipped away that lap. 31.8 for Wes McCoy, 30.5 for Justin Dearborn. Right now, Dearborn is about 7 to 8 tenths faster. No, I'm sorry, he's a sec almost a second and a half faster than Wes McCoy. And I think within the next lap, you're going to see him in the same camera shot as the 96. This time by... Two and a half seconds cut down to 1.3 seconds. And there he is, top of your screen. Reeling in, Wes McCoy in the 96 for the lead, maybe for the race win. Just see the speed differential between those two, and it's really no contest. I think they are slowly approaching another truck, but... This is not going to be much of a battle, I don't think. Dearborn to the inside. Gets the advantage, slides up in front of the 96. Ooh, little contact there as he got bumped by McCoy going into turn two. But Dearborn to the point. And now I think, based on the lap times, he's going to start pulling away. So right now it looks like Dearborn's race to lose, but still we have not reached the halfway point in this race. Anything can happen. He could still make a mistake. He's about to lap fourth place. Jay Jefferson, which would leave us with only three trucks left on the lead lap. He's going to catch him in a pretty bad spot here into turn three. 
going to try the outside line and does a pretty nifty job of swinging around the top side to lap the 54. Destin Bolin right now running in 13th, going to yield to the outside for the 46. He'll go another lap down. Next car for Dearborn to deal with will be the 77 of Ryan Butcher. Who, if I'm not mistaken, I believe was the car or the truck that Wes McCoy, Al Lagacy, and others were closing in on when we had our entire top five slide up into the wall in turns one and two. So we'll see just how aggressively Ryan Butcher battles with Dearborn here. And you're probably wondering, like, why are Jay Jefferson and Dylan Poteet, Benny Watts, and Ryan Butcher all still out there? Well, they're only one lap down. If the guys ahead of them run into issues and come to pit road, you lose more than a lap on pit road. So these guys could very easily cycle back up to the top of the board. But they need Dearborn, McCoy, and Legacy to all have some issues here in the final half of this race. Which is not guaranteed it will happen, but if our second LCQ race yesterday was any indication, it is definitely in the realm of possibility. Looks like Dearborn's going to catch Butcher down here in three and four. Maybe not even till the front straightaway, which would make it an easier pass for Dearborn. He's going to duck it down to the inside. Dylan Poteen, the 17 on pit road, was running in fifth. That's going to drop him down at least to seventh, maybe further. No contact there between Dearborn and Butcher. Don't crowd him, and he does. It puts him up into the wall, but they both keep it straight. Don't know how much more damage that might have put on the right side of the 46, though. I mean, right now, he's enjoying an over five-second lead back to Wes McCoy. The lap times are completely different from each other. So I don't know why Dearborn would have raced Ryan Butcher that aggressively and possibly caused himself a shot at winning this race. Boy, he's going to have a lot of traffic to deal with in a moment, though. This is a gaggle of trucks. Al Lagacy, Levi McIntyre, Michael Norman, and Benny Watson. They're almost four wide there coming off of turn four. And Dearborn is not too far away from this. If he catches them, where in the world is he going to go? Those Thorsport teammates beating and banging on each other. Benny Watts enjoys the bang party. And here comes Dearborn. He can't possibly take him four wide here. What lane does he choose? And could this cost him? Could this maybe mess him up in a corner? He's going to swing to the outside of Watson and Norman, but now he's boxed in behind McIntyre and Legacy. This is not a good place for Justin Dearborn. Oh, McIntyre got a little loose up into Legacy. That opens the door for Dearborn, and McIntyre's up into the wall with the 28. And Samo just kind of like the door opened for Dearborn, and he stepped right through. He's going to clear that gaggle of trucks pretty easily. So with Legacy going a lap down there, only two trucks are on the lead lap now. Dearborn and McCoy. Next truck for him to deal with, Dylan Poteet in the 17, who did drop out of the top 10 after having to make a pit stop from 5th. And Dearborn's going to get to his inside. And probably looks like he'll clear him before we even get up here into turn three. Dearborn's car has looked pretty steady underneath him. Hasn't looked like he's been anywhere close to overstepping the cushion as we're at 20 laps to go. Wes McCoy in the 96 hasn't caught up to that group of trucks yet. Still riding in second place. His lap times have gotten a little better, though. Before, when he was being reeled in by Justin Dearborn, he was running 31 fives. He's now been able to bring it down to 31 fours, but still much different than race leader Dearborn's lap times. Dearborn right now is running 30.4s. So a full second faster than Wes McCoy. Benny Watson making his way around Dylan Poteet. Poteet under fire now from Michael Norman. 
That, I believe, is a battle for position between those two. Yes, it is. Both of them are four laps down, so they're both battling for the 13th position as we've got some more drivers out of the race, I believe. No, actually, no. We documented all the drivers out of the race already. Little contact there between Ryan Butcher and Levi McIntyre. That is not for position. McIntyre is at least two laps down, maybe three. He's three laps down. Butcher is only two laps down. And Norman will clear Poteet for the 13th spot. Benny Watson hoodless continuing to ride in the fifth spot. Just hoping something happens. And here's another group of trucks that Dearborn's going to have to deal with. Matt McIntyre, Jesse Turner, Nick Rail, Destin Bolin all in this mix as they all make some contact. And Jeff Clark just up ahead as well. Dearborn did a good job with the first group of trucks. How does he do here with this group? Contact there with Jesse Turner. Turner goes up into rail. Dearborn had to lift and he's still boxed in. He cannot afford in these final 15 laps to be involved in a wreck. That basically could take him out of this. He's going to try and shoot the middle between Nicholas Rail and Jesse Turner, and he's somehow going to make it work. He muscled his way through. Now to the inside of Dustin Bolin. Oh, when that truck got loose. That's the first time I've really seen that truck get loose on him here. That was a close call through turn three. He'll clear the double zero of Bolin. He'll now go to the inside of Jeff Clark. Put him a lap down again. Clark now three laps down to the leader. And again, a hairy situation. He makes it through and Destin Bolin goes around off the nose of Nick Rail. Then maybe a little help from Jesse Turner as well. Bolin running in the 12th position up and into the outside wall. Everybody cleared him though. And Turner's up into the wall in turn three. And he gets clobbered from behind by Michael Norman. And they're wrecking even further up. That's Poteet and McIntyre together. Oh, and a side swipe from Wes McCoy, the second place truck. More damage to the right side of his Yungling Chevrolet Silverado. I believe I pronounced that correctly. And everything right now is going right for Justin Dearborn. He's already lapped all but one truck in the field, and now that one truck has even more damage. Now catching the 54 of Jay Jefferson is Dearborn. Going to try and put him two laps down. I'm sorry, actually... Yeah, put him two laps down. I, I was thinking that uh, he was lapping Jeff Clark. I saw Clark for a brief moment on the grid. And Dearborn getting closer and closer to 10 laps to go. Now, if Dearborn runs into a mistake, where is the 96? There's the 96 and there's the 28. I was wondering if maybe Legacy would have any opportunity to capitalize on the damage sustained by Wes McCoy, but you can see right there that he's running ahead of the 96, which means that the 96 is a full lap ahead of the 28. Well, almost a full lap ahead. So right now, it is Wes McCoy who would be the one to capitalize if the 46 makes a mistake. Ryan Butcher is actually taking his car behind the wall, as has Jesse Turner. And that truck leaving pit road, I think that was Nicholas Rail in the 0-3 as Dearborn's going to get around Dustin Boland and continuing to set blistering laps. His fastest lap of the race was a 30.106 and 40 laps in, he's still running 30.5s. That time was a 30.8 as he was having to make his way around the double zero, but still, he's one of the few trucks out there that's running sub-31 second lap times. It has absolutely been a dominating performance here by Dearborn after he took the lead from West McCoy. That truck is not clean though. He has been involved in a spin, but apparently his contact was not significant enough to affect him lap time wise. 
He will have Levi McIntyre possibly to deal with before this race is over, but with the, de the amount of discipline and wherewithal he's had having to get by groups of trucks, not really sure Levi McIntyre is going to be much of an issue for him. Matt McIntyre, we haven't really talked much about him. He was involved in an early incident, but he's now up in the sixth position. Three laps down, but a good comeback for the 10 machine. Actually, he just lost sixth place. It's actually a battle for position here between Jeff Clark and Matt McIntyre. And Clark just took the spot. Let's move him to sixth and McIntyre to seventh. Dearborn already got around Levi McIntyre, put him another lap down. Levi has been able to work his way back up into the top 10. He's up to ninth, but now four laps down to race leader Dearborn. There'll be six to go when he hits the line. There's some trucks up here. McCoy, Legacy, and Poteet, who I believe he is probably going to catch before this is over. The thing that is not on the side of Wes McCoy is time, though, because let's say the 46 does get involved in an incident with maybe two to go or on the last lap. That's still enough time for him to get to pit lane, complete the race before the 96 can get around two times to take the lead away. Because right now, Wes McCoy is almost a lap down. I mean, he's right now going into turn one, and the 46 is coming out of turn four. So he is nearly an entire lap down. Five to go for Justin Dearborn. He has hit his marks perfectly since taking the race lead away. Had a couple of times where it looked like the back end was going to step out on him, but he was able to hang on to it. His lap times are getting faster. I don't know how that's possible. He just ran a 30.3 last time by. Maybe a little bit of draft or something. 30.4 again this lap. And then also we got to bear in mind that Dearborn may not end up spinning, but he could get caught up in an incident not of his own making ahead of him. That's another possibility that he's got to keep his eyes glued to the windshield and know what's going on, not only in front of him, but over maybe in turn one and two. If an incident happens there, he needs to be notified of it. So that way he's ready to take action if necessary. Ooh, he overstepped the cushion a little bit there. The back end didn't step out, but you could hear him definitely have to lift as Benny Watson, fourth place, has had an incident. And he's coming to pit road here in the final few laps of this race. He had actually just gotten around Jay Jefferson for fourth. As Dearborn to the outside of Al Legacy. Puts him another lap down. Now we'll try and cut to the inside on Dylan Poteet. Oh, little contact there. Almost spun the 17. And now where does he go? He's going to try the inside line against Poteet. Slides up in front and completes that pass. That was a little bit of a adrenaline pumping moment as the white flag is in the air. One more lap to go for Justin Dearborn. Boy, he has had some near misses here today, but he has proved that he knows how to get it done on dirt. Whether it comes to laying down good lap times, working his way through traffic. And he's going to reap the reward. The first Tennessee Ray duel at fuel checkered flag is going to go to Justin Dearborn here today. Well, Justin Dearborn, in order to win at a dirt track, you have to run a clean race. And that is exactly what he did. I know it's kind of an oxymoron at a dirt track. I mean, how do you keep a truck clean? 
but in terms of your racing style, how you approach traffic, how you approach other drivers that you're battling for position, you have to drive clean. You have to hit your marks. And Dearborn did all of that, and that is why he is today's winner. Only two trucks finished this race on the lead lap. Wes McCoy, who led all the rest of the laps that Dearborn didn't, was the only other driver to finish on the lead lap. Al Lagasse finished third, two laps down. Jefferson in fourth. Three laps down in fifth was Jeff Clark. Matt McIntyre, Nicholas Rail, Levi McIntyre finished in fifth through eighth. Benny Watson finished ninth as he uh, DNF'd in the closing stages. And Destin Boland finished in tenth only. Uh, ten drivers finished this race. If you include Watson's DNF, Poteet was the last car running in the 11th position. And then everybody else finished out of the race here. Some of these guys never even really got out of the blocks, retiring in the first ten laps, like Gardner, Miller, Usury, Farina, Dylan Young. So tough break for all of them, but that's the byproduct of this type of racing. And we saw a lot of it in the... Heat races and LCQs yesterday, expected just the same here today in the main event. But Justin Dearborn is the winner here today at the Duel at Fuel. Congratulations to him. Hope you guys enjoyed today's main event. If you did, be sure to feel like, subscribe, become part of the crew today. We have shown you full feature results, and we will see you guys next time for our next special event, whatever it may be, in February. Until then, I've been Seth Cole. You've been watching a production of the SRA Offline Racing at its best.